Ben didn't cry often. He didn't used to, anyway. He was never sad enough to cry when he was alive, but now he was dead. What had happened? I remembered walking up to a scout captain and asking where Scout Basil Burlow had gone. I remember the horror that struck his false stone heart that made it skip. Oh, have you not heard, sir? Burlow was a traitor. He was caught burning off his sigil. The Emperor executed him an hour ago. Thorne remembered running through the hallways, thoughts replaced by pure rage. He knew he could not hide it any longer. He had known about the lies Villas had been spewing for years. He had tried to hide his knowledge, trying to survive, trying to stop it. He never knew how, but he knew he had to try. That was all gone when he heard that Bellos had killed Basil. Basil, the shy coven scout that he had met at the gala. Basil, the witch with strong plant magic. Basil, the beautiful boy with chocolate skin and curly green hair. Basil, the love of Thorne's sad, boring life. It was Thorne's fault. It was all his fault. He had told Basil to burn his sigil so he could run away with him. He remembered telling Ivory, his palisman, to run to his room and stay hidden as his cloak to stay safe. I remember taking a standard cloak instead. I remembered storming into the throne room, throwing his mask to the ground, and his, the already broken piece fell to the floor as he tore off the ivory fabric around his neck. I remember drawing a spell circle of pure wild magic, striking bellows in the face and causing a dripping green wound across his face. I challenge you to a duel, you fucking mer- He remembered the sensation of drowning. Then he remembered opening his eyes and feeling light. There was no soreness, no back pain, no headache. He stood up quickly, looking around for Bellos. He saw the Emperor leaving, hunched over and making various curses as he held his face together. He roughly cried for his assistant, Kikimura, as he put his mask back on to hide the wound. Get me a palisman. Get back here, coward. I'm not done with you. That was the moment Thorne saw his body sprawl out across the floor, throat gouged out and very still. Very still. He was dead. Basil? Basil, are you here? Basil! Basil, please! Basil! It took weeks to get used to it. The whole being dead thing, at least. He would sit in the afterlife silently. He wouldn't talk to the other Golden Guard spirits. He didn't want to talk to them. He wanted Basil. Caleb, the Ortet of all the Grimwalkers, was willing to sit with him and try to talk. It was all one-sided, but Thorne learned lots of things about the other guards. He learned the real history of the Isles. He learned about Bellos' past. Thorne! Thorne, come quick! Thorne looked up to see one of his predecessors. Frost, if he remembered correctly. What do you want? he muttered. Philip is making the new Grimwalker. Since he's your successor, you should really be there. That's what made Thorne pop his head from the bundle of blankets he called a bed. He's making another one? This soon? Well, you're dead. He needs to train another Golden Guard before the Day of Unity, Frost shrugged. Come on. You should see this, after all. Thorne had heard about Grimwalker creation when Caleb tried to talk to him. Naturally, a Grimwalker blooms from a plant after its creation. But according to the human spirit, they didn't always come out right. If they were stillborn or seemed to be sickly, he would rebury them and let them continue to grow, pulling them out by their arm if they managed to grow strong enough to live. It was rare when they did. That's why there are more bones than guards, Caleb had explained. They're the ones who never managed to get out of the planter. Thorn reluctantly followed Frost out of the spirit world, shuddering as he watched his long-dead predecessor dra- dive into the water. The second Golden Guard, even. How many times had he watched a Grimwalker seedling bloom? Bellos, or as he had been informed, Philip, was sitting at a desk with a journal open, but had long since slipped into sleep. There was a flower in the plant earth that had not yet bloomed, and it was hard to believe that a baby was in there. I'm excited, Ross muttered. I'm not. Honor, Thorne's direct predecessor, snapped. I'm not looking forward to watching this again. Get used to it, kid. 
Ray Grimwalker elbowed on her in the side. His name was Echo, and he seemed to be some sort of leader to the others. Thorn didn't really talk to him much, though Echo did smile at him when he, they crossed plat paths. If Thorn could call it that, at least, his smile was more a straight line wrinkling the scars of his face. I'm just saying I don't like watching kids suffer, Honor growled. My life wasn't that bad, Thorn muttered. Quit bickering! He's blooming! He's blooming! Thorn looked over his shoulder, seeing the flowers start to open, showing a Grimwalker baby in the middle. It yawned with a squeak before it started to cry. Thorn stared at it in shock. It wasn't like he wasn't fond of children. He had just never been around them. The baby was extremely tiny, but it had big ears that stuck out from its head. Bellos growled in annoyance as he was awakened by the newborn's cries. He ignored it for a little while, but Thorn couldn't. He walked over to the little baby, instinctively putting a hand out to comfort the child, despite the fact that the child wouldn't feel or see him. He pretended to brush a finger across the baby's cheek, wanting to comfort it so badly. He could have sworn the baby stopped crying for a split second when his ghostly fingers brushed its face. Hello, little one, Thorn whispered. A smile, smile gracing his face. Well, look at that, darling. Evelyn, Caleb's wife, chuckled. He has his father's... Damn, everything. He looks exactly like you, Caleb. Caleb didn't respond, just turning to Philip with an upset glare. What's his name? Frost asked. Echo walked over to where Philip was t continuing to tidy up, reading his journal. Hunter, he answered, after witch hunting. What a sick joke. Thorn decided to ignore the comment. Hey, Hunter, he cooed. He only left the baby's side when Philip walked up to the planter, hissing something under his breath, looking the baby over and removing him from the flower. The plant immediately wilted, and Philip took a dirty cloth and wrapped the small child into it. Thorn frowned, realizing just how much that baby was going to suffer. What, what happens now, he muttered. We watch, Echo growled. That's all? Really? Thorn hissed. That's all we're able to do? You're dead, Thorn. We all are, Honor scolded him. You have to get used to that. Thorn just scowled at him, turning away angrily. He couldn't think of anything right now. He didn't know how to feel. He didn't want to think of what would happen to that kid. He didn't want to think of how useless he was. Despite sharing a space with generations upon generations of Grimwalkers, he had never felt more alone. Thank you.